I can speak for a number of black folks or the majority of black folks when I say this. It was never about OJ. Because for one, OJ wasn't that connected to the black community anyway. I'm just being honest. I'm just being transparent, as you guys say. But it was about the numerous injustices we saw when it came to the courts and black people. Whether it was a black man or black woman, there was numerous injustices, unfairness, like this. When he's arrested for driving with a suspended license, they can search his car. Officer Oliver leaves the car, does a 360, and then goes back in the car, retrieving a sealed liquor bottle and pours it out. That was the sound of the seal on the liquor bottle breaking. Here's another angle. While Officer Muth questions Riley about marijuana again, Did somebody else is smoking your car early. Oliver tosses the empty bottle into the passenger seat. They don't find any marijuana in the car. Here's Officer Oliver. I'll be back. They was mad as the devil when they heard this. Simpson, would you please stand and face the jury? We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. Jubilation and sheer disbelief. It is shortly before noon Chicago time, and history is in the making. By the time you all see this, you will already know the OJ verdict. But we, just like the rest of the country, are waiting to hear it. All right, Mrs. Live. Robertson, would you uh, do you have the envelope with the sealed verdict, please? Yes, Your Honor. All right, would you give this to Deputy Trower? All right, Mr. Car Mr. Uh, Simpson, would you please stand and face the jury? <laughs> Mrs. Robertson. Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles. In the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA097211. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. This playwright captured the sheer, complete total essence of how most or majority of black America felt. I remember the O.J. Simpson trial very vividly. I'll never forget the day that the verdict was announced because I was hanging out with my friend, a white guy, Chris Brown. We saw these two uh, black friends of ours who were celebrating and Chris was like, how can you guys be happy that O.J. was acquitted? And one of the black girls said, oh, he didn't kill that white I will never forget that. For a lot of African Americans, they saw the trial not as uh, an indictment of O.J. Simpson, but really as an indictment of the LAPD. One of the other characters in the play, Kim, she has two sons, one who's in school and the other who's in prison. And she's looking at this trial, not caring whether or not O.J. did it. She just wants a win. That wouldn't just be a win for him. That'd be a win for all of us. <laughs> for all the black men that's been railroaded by the system. And for all their mothers who've had to stand by and watch, for once, we'll finally get a taste of what justice feels like. And for once, we could finally say, yes, but we got one, you mother. Yeah, we got one. Let me try to comprehend how mad y'all were when y'all heard that verdict. Were you mad like we were when this happened? Are you mad like we were when this happened? What about this? How about this? This? Or 
about this? The O.J. Simpson trial encompassed a litany of things. There was race. Some might want to act like it had nothing to do with race. If you believe that, I have a bridge I'd like to sell you. It's sitting in my backyard. Simpson was a rich, famous black man whom a lot, one particular group loves to hate. The audacity of this black man. Well, I don't know. In private, you, you would say something else like niggers. The audacity of this negress to become rich. And some of you guys are struggling to buy a piece of bread or a loaf of bread. You folks love putting them kind of men in their places. Admit it. I feel like if white America just admit to the unnecessary and ridiculous hatred and biasness, they would be a whole lot better. This world would be a whole lot better. You love putting these black men in their places. Plus, he had the gall to marry an angelic, pure white woman. Yeah, for those who didn't know, I was being very sarcastic. Then on top of that, he was accused of killing her and her young, red-blooded, all-American. He had everything to live for. Nice home. Nice family nice future and career then it was cut short simpson was publicly lynched even before he went to trial that's what they they'd like to do that to black folks the kicker is most of hollywood knows knows about these these um famous people and their personal lives but it's ignored until the person is accused of doing something shouldn't be caught doing he made a lot of people rich oj simpson made a lot of people rich they had no problem looking the other way until what he did or does interferes with their money doesn't that sound familiar what's going on currently with a particularly rich black famous man let's continue simpson might have been a lot of negative things but he ain't no murderer i really don't believe it i can't tell you if it was before the trial during the trial or after the trial i was speaking to a guy i knew and at the time and he was associated with an infamous group i'm not gonna say the name but the guy was black but he was associated with a group in them streets and he told me that word was going around that um, a lot of people know Simpson and didn't commit the murder, but he was being it was being pinned on him, and that the way um, the two individuals were killed, um, the method in which they were taken out, it was a calling card for a particular group of people who are known for doing this particular style. Um, I don't know if style is the right word, but they're known the, the way the two individuals were taken out. It was um, a particular signature they have in taking people out like that. So it's known, it was widely known that Simpson didn't do it. But he was the fall guy. Plus he was black, rich, and famous. <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah, I don't, I really, I never believe he did that. And then it was like, if you think about it, they were taken out of here with knives, right? With a knife. Nicole Brown, you know, she was still in her prime. She wasn't, I don't think they said anything, mentioned anything about her being handicapped or disabled. The guy, he was young, red-blooded American young man who was uh, pursuing a career in Hollywood, acting, I believe. He worked as a waiter, and I believe he was, he was very athletic. So how can one man take two people out at once without someone putting up a hell of a fight and possibly escaping? You know, you, you would have to have some superhuman strength to hold one person, hold one, keep them from running away while you, you know, it didn't add up. And it still don't add up to me. I 
Let me continue. I wasn't into O.J. Simpson, so don't think that I'm like, oh, you're just saying that because you were into him. I know I was never into him. He was at the prime of his career when, you know, I wasn't into football, and I didn't even know about that. At the time that he was in the prime of his career, I was in elementary school. And then as I got older, you know, I still wasn't. I saw him in commercials and things of that nature, but, you know, he wasn't somebody I followed like that. And I saw movies. He, he he did some movies. He did TV shows. But he still wasn't somebody I followed. And the only thing I didn't like about him is, you know, like most successful black men do. They leave the black woman they started off with, the one that supported them and had children with them. And they go and marry these um, other women, you know, the ones that will marry a rich black man <laughs> only. And, you know, I, that, I don't like that. So if you're just some regular regular black guy with a regular job, most likely they're not going to be with you. But anyway, if that's how you want to be treated. So let's go on. O.J. Simpson was born July the 9th, 1947 in San Francisco, California. He was an American collegiate and professional football player who was a premier running back known for his speed and elusiveness his success on the field led to a career in film and television simpson played football at a high school in san francisco first as a tackle and then as a fullback he attended san francisco city college 1965 to 66 to achieve a scholastic record that allowed him to play at the university of southern california where he set team records for yards gained by rushing 1967 he gained 14, 1,415 yards and 68, 1,709 yards. He was named All-American in 67 and 68, played in two Rose Bowl games, and won the Heisman Trophy as the best collegiate player in the season in 1968. At USC, he was also a member of a world record-setting 440-yard relay team. Simpson, who was often called Juice because of his energetic runs and because of his initials, could stand for Orange Juice, was the number one draft choice of the American Football League, Buffalo Bills, in 69. The following year, the AFL merged with the National Football League. The Bills were members of the American Football Conference of the NFL when Simpson set a single record a single season record for yards gained rushing 2003 and 1973 the Bills were never a contending team during his stay but Simpson was a great box office draw as they always are injuries to his knees prompted the Bills to trade him in 78 to the san francisco 49ers but he retired after the 79 season his 75 record of most touchdowns scored in the season 23 stood until 1983 and his 1973 season russian record for most yards gained lasted until 1984 when it was broken by eric dickerson simpson led the afc in russian yardage four times 1972 through 73 1975 through 76 his career total yards gained 11,236 was second in the all-time rankings at the time of his retirement he was inducted into the pro football hall of fame in 1985 now let's get on to what you guys really want to hear what you need to know for many people old enough to remember oj simpson's murder trial his exoneration was a defining moment in their understanding of race policing and justice I'm be real with you at the time his trial i don't i have not seen another trial as infamous as his i mean and this was before social media this was before the internet was popping he um everybody that's all you talked about you went to the grocery store it doesn't matter you doctor's office wherever you went people were talking about this case and the majority of people i talked to of course they wanted him to be innocent and felt he was innocent and i was one of them 
Um, I sat there, and I, at the time, I think I was going to junior college or something, so I like to go to college early in the morning, go get my classes out the way, and I would be home in the afternoon. So I was able to catch up on, you know, a lot of the trial, and it was televised, and I was glued. (laughs) I was glued to it. I listened to the case. I listened to all the witnesses and the prosecution and the defense. And from what I ascertained, what I processed, um, that man, I, you know, I was just like, that man, and I was nervous. The anticipation uh, when our trial ended and the verdict, it was, you, you felt it in the air. It was tense. Let's continue. Nearly three decades later, it still reflects the different realities of white and black Americans. Simpson died Wednesday, but remains a symbol of racial divisions in American society because he is a reminder of how how deeply inequities are felt, even as newer figures have come to symbolize the struggles around racism policing and justice some people recall watching their black co-workers and classmates erupting in jubilation at perceived retribution over institutional racism others remember their white counterparts shocked over what many felt was overwhelming evidence of guilt and like it, it wasn't about the trial it was about black folks feeling i can speak for majority of black people they felt vindicated because prior to O.J. Simpson, we saw the world saw Rodney King get beat like he was a slave on a plantation. They beat that man like that was a group of overseers, including the enslaver, beating that man because he stole an extra biscuit or something. Then you had Latasha Harlan, that, uh, they played that video on the news showing this little 15-year-old girl walking away from a counter in a liquor store or the, the corner market and get shot in the back of the head. So, you know, that was murder. Yeah. Yeah. So we just, the, you know, black America had had enough. We'll finally get a taste of what justice feels like. And for once, we could finally say, yes, but we got one, you mother. Yeah. We got one. It was like, you know, we were already seething because of Rodney King. And then you added um, Latasha Harlins to it. It was a powder keg. You know, it was it was like a nuclear bomb. It was like we were boiling. And, and this had been going on. The, the injustices committed against black folks have been going on and has been going on for centuries. And black people had enough. Let's go on. It wasn't really about O.J. Simpson, the man. It was about the rest of the society and how we responded to him, said Justin Hansford of Howard University, law professor. Much like the trial, the public's reaction to the verdict was largely shaped by race. Today, criminal justice reforms that address racial inequities are less divisive, but that has been replaced by backlash against diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, bans on books that address systemic racism and restrictions around black history lessons in public schools. The hard part is we're going to keep cycling through this until we learn from our past, said University of Pennsylvania sociologist and Africana studies professor Camille Charles. But there are people who don't want us to learn from our past and that is correct we're the only group of people that people have an issue with talking about the past and you got to wonder why you don't want to hear about the past they'll they'll make it seem like oh my god just let it go they that that's their mentality these people will not let this go they keep harping on it it's like why do you care what we talk about we don't care about what you talk about and we're going to keep talking about it. It's like when you harm someone and you don't do anything to try to rectify it, to fix it, that that it never leaves. That person is is going to always remember what you did cuz you never took you never did anything to try to fix it. So that's the problem with this uh, this country. 
racist white America. You guys want to keep want to keep doing things and being biased against us, but then you don't want us to talk about it. It's almost like you, if you guys could, you will put us back on the plantation and tell us to keep our eyes on to the ground and don't look at you and don't talk to you. Don't say nothing and don't complain. And when we punish you, you better act like you enjoy it. That would never happen again in life. I promise you. So get it out your mind. Get it out your mind. Let's go on. During the trial, African-Americans were four times as likely to presume Simpson was innocent or being set up by the police, said UCLA Executive Vice Chancellor and, and Provost Darnell Hunt who at the time was a young sociologist writing a book about the different ways that black and white Americans saw the trial. The case was about two different views of reality or two different takes on the reality of race in America at that point in history, he said. Simpson's trial came on the heels of the 1992 acquittal of police officers in the beating of Rodney King in Los Angeles, which was caught on video and exposed America's deep trauma over police brutality for many african americans in 1995 simpson's acquittal represented a rebuke of the institutional racism in the justice system but many white americans believe simpson and his defense team played the race card to get away with murder and i'm so tired of hearing white folks say the playing the race card and I, I i just would like to remind you like people you guys are the ones who play the race card racism white privilege division and it was so funny it would be funny if it wasn't sad when somebody had come in, in some of the videos or shorts i do they'll say all you're doing is is, is, is causing division <laughs> like, what kind of planet do you guys what kind of mind do you have to have to think that division only comes when people talk about the past like it's it, it, it's not here until black folks discuss the past what mind set do you have to how do you process things what Please tell us what world you live in mentally. Because a lot of us who are not Caucasian know that there is division. Hispanics know. Asians know. A lot of non-black folks know there is division in this country. Especially especially when you go to their countries and, and you buy islands and you buy locations and then you put up signs telling them they can't trespass and they're natives to the land. That's the vision. When you go to all white communities in this country, which I'm still trying to figure out how in 2024 you have majority white communities, but you guys, you know, move and groove wherever you want to in whoever community. You go and just plant your flag there like, I don't give a F how y'all you guys feel about us living here. I'm going to live here. And I'm going to look through you and treat you like you don't exist. That's how you guys are when you walk, when you move into their communities. You treat them like they're not even there. That is so rude and disrespectful. But then you have all white communities. And let somebody move into that community that um, don't look like you and see how welcoming you are. But then you move into other people communities and most of them don't even pay you much attention because they're just trying to survive. But... I believe some people, the communities you guys gentrify in, they just start making you feel uncomfortable as you make them feel when they move into your communities. Wouldn't that be fair? Let's continue. The difference could be seen in many ways black media outlets cover the trial compared to mainstream publications, Hunt said. Those outlets tended to raise questions about whether the justice system was really fair in terms of what might be called the black experience, he said. Polling in the past decades shows mo most people still believe Simpson committed the murders, including most African Americans. But the racial and historical dynamics at play in a trial made it about more than the murders. Hands forward. The Howard University law professor who was black and was 12 years old at the time of the Simpson verdict said he remembers the difference 
in white and black reactions, even in liberal environments like Silver Spring, Maryland, the Washington sur suburb where he grew up. When he was acquitted, all the black students celebrated and ran into the hallways, jumping up and down, he said, and the white teachers were crying. One of Hansford's white teachers said something about Simpson that he didn't agree with, and when he responded, the teacher rebuked him. It was one of the worst ways a teacher has ever talked to me, Hansford said. The O.J. Simpson trial created a situation where people, where people were dug into their sides. The racial turmoil embedded in the court cases was at the center of the 2016 oscar winning documentary oj made in america instead of focusing on the murders and evidence presented at trial director ezra eldman eldman placed the crimes within the context of the civil rights struggle from which simpson was largely insulated by the warm embrace of the white mainstream all OJ had to do to get recognized is to run a football. And almost concurrent to that, you have a community of people whose only way to get recognized is to burn their community down during the 1965 Watts riot. Those were the two tracks I was trying to home in on, knowing that they will intersect 30 years later. Simpson had married a white woman in a nation that had historically punished black men who dared to explore mixed race relationships. But Simpson also was a former football star, a wealthy Hollywood actor and brand spokesman whose money and privilege distinguished him from impoverished black men that the criminal justice system punished. I'm not black, I'm OJ, he liked to tell his friends. He had been admired as a one-of-a-kind celebrity whose transgressions, including a pattern of spousal abuse, were overlooked as incompatible with his all-American persona. He actually seemed to go to quite he actually seemed to go to quite a bit of trouble to distance himself from black folks, but the black support for him wasn't about that, said Charles, the University of Pennsylvania sociologist. I think it was about seeing the system work the way we were told it was supposed to. Even as systemic racism in criminal justice systems remains an issue, Charles thinks black Americans have grown less likely to believe in a famous defendant's innocence as a show of race solidarity. The one thing that has changed is that you didn't see the same kind of getting behind R&B singer R. Kelly or Bill Cosby, Charles said. And many more black people were willing to say publicly, nah, he did that. I think it also could represent a better understanding of celebrity and wealth, she said. And the thing with R. Kelly, there was a videotape. And then people came out talking about their experience with him and then Bill Cosby some you know women came out talking about what he did to them but you know nobody I don't recall anybody ever coming on the stand of the OJ Simpson trial saying yeah you know OJ he Simpson. did things in the past that would make me believe that he was capable of committing murder I never heard anybody testify to that well this video has come to an end I just you know, I saw all the articles and discussions about O.J. Simpson. I wanted to put something together to express how I felt and read an article that, you know, um, that touched on why black folks felt the way they felt about this verdict. It really didn't have too much to do with O.J. Simpson. It could have been a, um, a landscaper that was accused of doing this, a black man um, gardener or cook. It didn't matter. It was black folks feeling like you know have been so deprived from seeing and receiving justice in this country to finally see it it just you know it was priceless to them it was like a gift that's what happens when there's oppression in this country and unfairness when you're in a place that's filled with unfairness and oppression you're going to get those kind of reactions and responses if you don't like it do right stop being oppressive stop being unfair it's as simple as that 
okay that's about the end that's it for this video thank you for your time and attention um thank you new subscribers if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and don't forget to press the notification bell so you will be alerted to the new content that we publish thanks again for your time i will see you in the next video peace out be safe take care peace